there's interesting work being done um, on rats and pigs. <laughs> um, and I think um, what, we, what we really need to understand better is this intersection between estrogen and stroke. Uh, because there's a lot of fear surrounding the use of exogenous estrogen and its contribution to the stroke risk, especially in women who have migraine with aura. So I think if we had to, if we had to focus on one area of research, I think that would be one of interest, and I do think that there are people that are, that are interested in that area and studying it. If doctors are more aware of the subtypes of migraine, then they might be able to help their patients plan and treat more efficiently. For example, if a patient is only having menstrually related migraine, then they may not need to go on Topamax, which is a medication that can be very beneficial for headaches but can have some side effects. They may be able to better utilize some of the estrogen treatments to just contain the menstrual migraine. Um, so being better able to understand the subtypes of migraine and, and how they relate to a woman's life cycle, I think will help clinicians guide women better in making treatment decisions. And hopefully that will lead to less over-treatment and fewer side effects from treatment, which is a big problem in, in migraine. Well, menopause is very rocky, unfortunately, because what happens perimenopausally is that there's a lot of um, unpredictable changes in estrogen levels. And this is a, a very sparsely studied area, but um, women oftentimes will, will see an increase in headaches around perimenopause. And that we suspect is due to changes in estrogen. And then after they get through menopause, it seems like the headaches settle down, but getting through menopause is not a one day ordeal. It often can take several years, and so that can be a very rough time for, for women. The migraine brain likes schedule and routine, just like every brain does, but um, I think as we get to be adults, we forget that, we think we don't need it as much as children do, but migraine, migraineurs really do. They need to go to bed at a regular time, wake up at a regular time, eat regular meals with protein, not a lot of sugar, not a lot of junk food, um, and they need to get regular exercise. And so that laying that foundation is gonna help your brain run as optimally as possible and recover as rapidly as it can. Migraine is a process that the brain has to go through, but um, it can be shorter, it can be less um, uh, disastrous to your daily life if you are if you're optimized to begin with. <laughs>